Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snetis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last video, we talked about lactobacillus, which is a gram-positive rod. Today, we'll talk about Propionibacterium acnes, which is another gram-positive rod. This bacterium lives on your skin, unlike Actinomyces israeli, which did not live on your skin. Now, let's get started. But first, here's a true story. A female in her 30s came complaining of vomiting, headache, decreased level of consciousness, somnolence, etc. Her medical history is significant for congenital hydrocephalus. Her surgical history is significant for multiple ventriculoperitoneal shunts to relieve that intracranial pressure by shunting the excessive cerebrospinal fluid from the brain into the peritoneal cavity. Knowing this history and knowing the physical exam findings, doctors ordered a lumbar puncture in order to take a sample of the cerebrospinal fluid around the spinal cord. What did they find out? No red blood cells. Okay, she's not bleeding. Increase white blood cells. Well, it could be infection or inflammation. Increase protein. Could be infection, inflammation, bacterial products, viral products, even your cytokines are proteins. Low glucose. Oh, now we're getting specific. This cannot be viral infection because viruses are not living organisms. They do not eat glucose. So this cause could be bacteria, parasite, fungus, but not a virus. So they did a gram stain, looked under the microscope to find gram-positive rods, right? We know now they are bacteria and that they are gram-positive and rods. So we're getting somewhere. The culture revealed Propionibacterium acnes. And since most doctors are doofuses, they did not know what to make of this fact. Oh, Propionibacterium acnes, isn't this the bacterium that causes uh, acne? All right. Uh, it doesn't explain all of these symptoms. Something else is going on. So they took another sample. Same bacterium showed up. They said, since it's gram-positive rod, let us shower the patient with penicillin. She did not improve. They tried every singular antibiotic that has coverage for gram-positive rods. The patient did not improve. Until a wise doctor who actually reads came and told them, you know what? Didn't you know that Propionibacterium acne can lead to opportunistic infections if you have any prosthetic device or intravascular line or shunt, etc. If you want her to get better, get the neurosurgeon and remove every singular artificial device out of her body, then give her the antibiotics. They did just this, and she was cured. Some words of wisdom from Will Durant, the author of The Story of Civilization. Quote, Our thousand fads of diet and drugs predispose us to the belief that we must be ridden with disease as compared to simpler men at simpler days. But this is a delusion. We think that where there are so many doctors, there must be more sickness than before. But in truth, we have no more sickness than in the past but only more money. Our wealth allows us to treat and cherish and master illnesses from which primitive men died without even knowing their Greek name. Close quote, like propionibacteriosis and stuff. Our wealth allows a wonderful person like you to watch a microbiology video by a doofus like me. Instead of spending our day in village tillage, barefooted and developing ancillostosomiasis, even my jokes have educational value. Hey, Medicosis, why do we call it Propionibacterium? Bacterium because it's a bacterium. Propioni because it can ferment carbohydrates, producing propionic acid as a pie product. Propionic, Propioni bacterium. This is my microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. Propioni bacterium, just like Mobilancus, Lactobacillus, and Actinomyces are anaerobic, non-spore-forming, gram-positive rods. So the anaerobic, non-spore-forming, gram-positive rods include Actinomyces, Lactobacillus, Mobilancus, and Propioni bacterium. We have two types of Propioni bacterium, or two species. Propioni bacterium acnes, which causes, guess what, acne and opportunistic infection if you have a prosthetic device in your body. There's also another one called Propioni bacterium propionicum, which reminds me of Heterophis heterophis and Loa Loa. Who named these things? 
Propioni bacterium acnes, gram-positive rod, non-spore forming, anaerobic or aerotolerant, catalase positive, which means it can catalyze the reaction of converting the harmful H2O2 into the harmless water and oxygen. This is how the bacteria evade your immune system. Propioni bacterium acne is part of the normal flora of your skin, external ear, oropharynx, and the female genitourinary system. Why do we call it propioni bacterium? Because it can ferment carbohydrates, producing propionic acid as a byproduct. Propioni bacterium acne is commonly found in blood cultures. But hold your horses and do not jump to conclusion that the patient's affliction is caused by propioni bacterium acne. It's probably caused by you introducing propioni bacterium into the blood while puncturing the skin to get your sample. It is your fault, which means you need to be careful while obtaining the sample. Clinically speaking, propioni bacterium acne can lead to many diseases. When you were young and, quote, independent, it gave you acne vulgaris. When you grow old and dependent on prosthetic devices and intravascular line and ventriculoperitoneal shunts, it gave you opportunistic infections, like our lady who suffered from vomiting, headache, decreased level of consciousness, etc. Propioni bacterium acne can also lead to lacrimal canaliculitis, not to be confused with dacrocystitis. Lacrimal canaliculitis is a problem or inflammation in the canaliculi, the ducts. But dacrocystitis is inflammation of the freaking acinus of the lacrimal gland. Hey, medicosis, how can I treat my acne? Contrary to popular belief, skin cleansing alone is not going to treat your acne. Don't get me wrong, it's amazing to have good skin hygiene. However, whether your lovely soap is gonna kill propioni bacterium acne is an empirical question, not a foregone conclusion. If you want to treat the acne quickly, you need to throw something onto the bacteria to kill it. The bacteria are not here on the surface of the skin. They are hiding in the follicle of your sebaceous gland. You want to kill propioni bacterium acne? Benzoyl peroxide or antibiotics like erythromycin and clindamycin. Topically, of course. If you're not in a hurry and if your acne is mild, you don't want to take this medication, all right, just wait. Most acnes, most mild acnes will resolve on their own, especially as you grow older. Hey, medicosis, which acne were you talking about? I'm talking about acne vulgaris, which is not to be confused with acne rosacea. I have a video about the differences between acne vulgaris and acne rosacea here on my YouTube channel. If you want to learn more about penicillin, erythromycin, clindamycin, you can download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. I also have a neuropharmacology course on my website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.